Yo ninjas, welcome back to the show, ninja works, it's doing and what did you eat today? Yes, welcome back to another episode of Drawing Manga Works. So today we're gonna draw Ninja Chun, or at least one of the versions of Ninja Chun, or there are more Ninja Chuns, I don't know. Is that my waifu? Or is that your waifu? Who is your favorite anime manga waifu? Or in fiction in general? Let me know in the comments. Who is your waifu? And maybe you might see it in the future. Who knows? Alright ninjas, let's get into the drawing and talk about it while showing you the drawing. Yes! Ninja <laughs> So most of the times the process is simple. There are mostly three steps. You have the sketching, the inking and the coloring. Or at least unless I skip coloring depending on what type of manga works. So at the beginning of this art I had more of a stiff position that I wanted to create for this girl. I, I had this sketchbook, the red sketchbook, where I wanted to make a, a little sketch of a, a girl, you know, just a simple sketch. But it turned out a bit more complex than I thought, or at least uh, went a bit further in the sketch. At first I wanted to make something nice in the sketchbook, you know, that you have something... It's like, okay, sketchbooks, you know, um, they're for practice, right? Depending on what the intent and goal is for you with sketchbooks. Because you have presentable sketchbooks or also just, you know, for practice. That's actually where sketchbooks are there, right? Most of the times. So when I was drawing this sketch of Ninja-chan, I wanted to make more a dynamic pose, more of a dynamic pose at some point than I mostly do, that, a bit more stiff positions. I, I sometimes find it hard to make uh, a little bit more 3D-ish pose than uh, just a standard pose, no, stiff pose. So I uh, let her sit on the ground with her legs uh, a bit like that, as you can see now. And I think that's a more interesting pose than just a normal stiff pose. But you can also, you know, experiment and uh, you know, still uh, practicing the craft, as you uh, can see. Like it's a never-ending story until the end of time. Yeah. But I liked it more this way when she was uh, a bit more on her knees and, you know, having some balls in her hand, you know. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically uh, a bit of the sketch, how I went with it. Like, sometimes I don't, don't completely know yet what it's gonna be like and then, uh, you know, it turns out like this. And after the sketch, of course, comes the inking in this case, depending on if I will do coloring afterwards or not. But the inking is mostly a part of it, unless it's just a practice sketch or just don't want to finish the drawing anymore. And just, you know, I think some, some sketches I make, um, I don't think are worthy enough to be inked. So uh, yeah, those uh, you won't see inked, but uh, yeah, sometimes sketches can look really nice, uh, depending on how you render it and stuff and how rough it is. But here, uh, inking with g-pen as most of the times I uh, really enjoy it. If you don't know it yet, but uh, the g-pen is basically a manga tool that a lot of great mangaka like Ichiro Oda, Masashi Kishimoto, uh, Theta Kubo, uh, many mangaka use these manga pens. Doesn't make that like, it doesn't mean that if you do that <laughs> your art becomes great, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a tool, you know. And I do enjoy it because of the line thickness control abilities and you know you can also use the Maricon pens and you know just also get similar things but with this it's just my personal preference as well and uh, if you don't know the g-pen yet uh, it's handy to uh, experiment with it at least once in your life if you're, if you're an artist or want to draw to see how it works you know so that you know what you can do with it and if it works for you then again if you draw more digital you know you can still have replicating programs i believe to uh to not have a like okay let's say you draw characters right um i prefer that the lines are not everywhere the same thickness like um that it's a bit more thick to thin and stuff like that and also at certain places with lines it's handy to have certain parts more thick or the things that needs to be more in the front, you know, to pop them out more to the front to give that 3D dimensional look-ish kind of thing, um, depending on which uh, of the objects or subjects or people or, uh, you know, parts of uh, the drawing needed to be more to the front, like this piece, like this part, you know? <laughs> 
but yeah, certain uh, parts are more to the back, so you know, it depends also, like, okay, so you want to, like, okay, it's a 2D drawing, right? But there are certain things in a drawing, at least for me, that you want people to notice more. And those parts, you kind of make a bit more thick, you know, like, uh, with the eyes, chin, and other parts, you know, it really depends. And sometimes it's, uh, when inking this, Sometimes I have to think a little bit and also where to ink first because I'm right-handed I'm not sure if you are right-handed or left-handed, but it's handy to keep your Coordination which way you ink in mind because the ink with the G pen or at least for me is mostly still wet when I just inked it You know because it's ink with the micron pens. You don't uh, really uh, have that they dry fast But uh, this is a different experience for me at least, when I practiced with both tools. And each has their own, you know, things that are coming more to the front and are better for me or, you know, they have their specific things that you can use to execute on the drawing and what you want to show. And with the manga, I really want to have those, those manga lines, you know, like those traditional manga lines, like manga lines that like what the, the the masters do the the great uh, you know but but not all of them use the g pen of course also a lot of great art comes from digital artists or people that only use uh, the micron pens I, I i cannot name i think uh, from uh, blue exorcist also used to use those the uh, other pens but you can also mix it up you know depending on uh, where you need it when you're at a specific point in the drawing and sometimes when stuff is a little bit wet, you can put a paper on it so that you can still reach that line that you want. And uh, yeah, sometimes I also use a hairdryer to uh, dry it up. But yeah, when the inking is done, go to the <laughs> color stage, as you can see here. And for this one, I mostly colored with the twin markers, I believe, from what I remember. As you can see, these black markers, the, those are most of the times twin markers. And the Copic markers are have more of a gray cover. I also got a new Radiant, by the way, that you saw. Uh, still have to read it. What do you need to think of uh, Radiant, the manga? It's from a French artist, Tony Valente. It's super great and the art looks great. Uh, real shonen-like, or at least it feels like it, but you still have that, a little bit of that. You have that French inspiration, or it feels like it, because if you come from a place, <laughs> like everybody comes from a place, it's like in you, right? That you experienced. So everybody has their own unique place where they live. Or maybe, okay, let's say you are born in Japan and you kind of know about anime and manga and stuff like that. But for me, at first, I, I did not know about it or what it even was. Like later, I discovered, okay, there's manga and anime. But at first, I did not know that some things I watched was even anime or manga. You know, it's just uh, a term that... Uh, the cool kids or ninjas want to say. Then again, yeah, uh, there's also another debate with anime and uh, animation, you know, with whether something is anime, um, because technically it's just animation, you know, short for animation. But uh, yeah, then you have other thoughts with that. <laughs> whether something is, uh, yeah, let's not go into that right now, but uh, if you have any thoughts about it, I guess uh, we can start it in the comments, but uh, yeah. But they're basically co coloring the piece, like mostly in the, you know, first, most of the times uh, putting the flat colors first, so that uh, I kind of know what colors need to be there. And then later shading and, uh, you know, mostly uh, do with the lightest parts first, because if you go with the darkest parts first, you cannot make them lighter again. Well, I think you have these uh, special uh, make to make them lighter, but yeah, so it's harder for me at least. Uh, to go from uh, dark to light instead of light to dark, so I mostly start with more with the light colors and then putting some shadings and, and, and with the shadings you can also um, place the darkest part or uh, quite dark parts at where it needs to be darker so you have to really keep uh, in mind where the light is coming from sort of in this case a bit from left above something like that um, different uh, light sources can also be a thing like Sometimes you can also play with like different colors of light. Let's say uh, you have like 
from the left, for example, red light, and from the right, blue light, you know, it kind of contrasts or goes nice together. And, and those lights you can also put on the drawing, playing with lights, you know, it's basically like a filming or with cameras, you know, with movies, you, you also have these uh, light things. It's also handy to um, get some knowledge about it and, and, tr and train yourself with that stuff, with the light, and yeah, I'm uh, still practicing it, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, I, I like to just do it, I guess, and then see how it, how it works, but then again, you, you, you still need to have a little bit of, uh, or some basic knowledge about the lights, and you have to, um, the color theory or something, just uh, search it up on the web or YouTube, they explain it really nicely something about color theory and then you know you have like um, when you color it's important to keep in mind uh, the warm colors and then the cold colors like you can make for example a drawing all in one color yet it still looks nicely because you use different shades um, opacities of the color so it's not all 100% red if you only use red, but then also a bit lighter red or pinkish. You know, it's, it's part of that color wheel or the color, what's it called? Category. Like, like let's say you have green and then you have lighter greens and stuff. Um, but yeah, if you're color blind, you know, I guess black and white is the best uh, way. <laughs> How else? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, if you're. A manga artist, I guess if you're colorblind, blind, it's kind of an advantage, maybe, because manga is mostly produced black and white. Also, I think also because it's cheaper to print, and then a few color pages. It's also faster to make, by the way, instead of coloring everything like this piece. Like let's say you have to color every panel like this if you make a manga, yeah, then it's uh, more work and you know deadlines. You have to produce. Uh, a chapter a week depending on where you do it but uh, some uh, some of course do full color so or a different artist so yeah here's the drawing um a little close up here so uh, yeah ninjas what do you think about this uh, ninja chun rated one to five ninja stars in the comments and uh <laughs> yeah yes and we're done here with nice. this piece let me know what you think in the comments and uh, how your mangas are going or if you make any manga or just enjoy watching some manga drawing videos like uh, when some people just watch Bob Ross you know just because he has a nice voice and yeah maybe I'm too hyper for you sometimes when I start or just talk about it but uh, you know I guess that's uh, just the way the way of the ninja case <laughs> yeah but yeah ninjas that was this drawing so um, yes who is your waifu let me know in the comments who's your waifu from anime games Manga, fiction, uh, what else is there? Movies, or in real life, you know, where just uh, have a side fictional waifu next to your, you know. Uh, <laughs> or husbando, if you're a girl. Who's your husbando? Well, yeah, so that's about it for this drawing video. Um, no, no, no. Drawing this manga works thing. Yes, that's it for this piece. Thank you very much for watching once again and also thank you for all the patrons and people on the party jar that support it once again right here on the screen. Thank you for that and of course if you watch this I'm already grateful if you can watch it you know all the way to the end or part of it or how you want to watch it maybe reversed or two times speed so I would talk faster. Uh, that's also an option of course or slower maybe if you want to have a slow motion kind of thing. But yeah man, that's about it. Who's your waifu? Or as Bando? Or you have something else, you know, like a thing, a robot. I don't know. How do you call it? Also don't forget to subscribe on YouTube because now we we miss about eight subscribers to reach reach the four hundred subscribers. So if we reach four hundred subscribers on YouTube, we'll do a live cooking stream with you ninjas. So if you want to see that faster, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already or tell a friend or your fellow ninja to do that if you want to see that live cooking stream not sure what i'm gonna cook yet but uh, we'll see about it when we reach that goal so that's something to look forward to if you want to see that happen somewhere hopefully soon or not yeah food 
Yes, thanks for joining once again Ninjas Ninja Bucks Ishtili, and see you ninjas the next time. Ninja Case! Oh, Ninja Case! <laughs>